they can unionize and say, hey, we don't want to work under those conditions. And their voice mattered because the, the factories needed the workers. Mm-hmm. In this case, does the state need the humans anymore? Their GDP is coming in almost entirely from the AI companies. So suddenly this political class, this political power base, they become the useless class, to borrow a term from Yuval Harari, the author of Sapiens. In fact, he has a different frame, which is that AI is like a new version of of digital. It's like a, a flood of millions of new digital immigrants, of alien digital immigrants that are Nobel Prize level capability, work at superhuman speed, will work for less than minimum wage. We're all worried about you know immigration of the other countries next door uh, taking labor jobs. What happens when AI immigrants come in and take all of the cognitive labor? <laughs> If you're worried about immigration, you should be way more worried about AI. Yeah, like it dwarfs it. <laughs> yeah. You can think of it like this. I mean, if you think about, um, we were sold a bill of goods in the 1990s with NAFTA. We said, hey, we're going to, um, NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, we're going to outsource all of our manufacturing to these developing countries, China, you know, Southeast Asia, and we're going to get this abundance. 